Why does this country have so many citizens seeking refuge and asylum in other countries? Hello, welcome to Opentiera. Today we're uncovering the hidden beauty of Eritrea, a country in East Africa known for its diverse landscapes, from the sandy shores of the Red Sea to the rugged mountains of the interior. Stick around as we answer some of Eritrea's most controversial questions. Eritrea is in Northeast Africa, bordered by Sudan, Ethiopia, Djibouti, and the Red Sea. It has a total area of around 45,000 square miles, making it one of the smallest countries on the African continent. Eritrea's coastal location along the Red Sea has shaped its history as an important trading and maritime power. There are three main geographical regions in Eritrea, the Central Highlands, the Western Lowlands, and the Eastern Coastal Plains along the Red Sea littoral. The Central Highlands stretch over 1,000 meters above sea level, while the arid lowlands are prone to droughts. The eastern coastline features coral reefs and hundreds of islands, including the important Dalak Archipelago. The earliest inhabitants of Eritrea were Stone Age hunter-gatherers. Agriculturalists followed them and settled in the fertile highlands of the region as early as 2500 BCE. Between the 8th and 13th centuries CE, the Eritrean coast was part of the Kingdom of Aksum, which controlled trade on the Red Sea and exported ivory, tortoise shells, gold and emeralds to the Roman Empire. Aksum began to decline in the 7th century. In the medieval period, Eritrea was caught between competing powers in the region. The Beja people moved into the western lowlands while the Saho and Afar settled in the east. The highlands came under the rule of the Bara Negash kingdom. In the 16th century, the Ottoman Empire conquered large parts of Eritrea, bringing the territory under the rule of Egypt. In 1869, the Suez Canal opened, increasing European interest in the Horn of Africa. Italy established a colony in there in 1890 after defeating the ruling Bara Nagash. The Italians employed Eritreans in the colonial army and built roads, ports and infrastructure to develop the colony. In the 1930s, Italy used Eritrea as a base to expand further into Ethiopia but was defeated by Ethiopian forces. After defeating the Italians in 1941 during World War II, the British took over the administration of Eritrea. The UN decided Eritrea would be autonomous and united with Ethiopia in a federation. In 1962, Ethiopia annexed Eritrea, ending its autonomous status. This sparked the Eritrean War of Independence. The war ended in 1991 when the Eritrean People's Liberation Front defeated Ethiopian forces. In 1993, after a UN-supervised referendum, Eritrea declared independence. Border clashes with Ethiopia led to a bloody two-year war from 1998 to 2000. The border dispute remains unresolved. They have remained a one-party state under President Isaias Afwerki since independence. Eritrea has seen rule by various powers and empires throughout its long history. After a 30-year war, they gained independence in 1993. Its location along the Red Sea coast has shaped its history and remains significant today. The World Bank estimates that Eritrea's population is about 3.6 million as of 2022. The Tigrinya make up around 50% of the population and inhabit the central and southern highlands. The Tigra are the second largest group at around 31% of the population and live in the north and west lowlands. The Saho reside in the eastern lowlands near the Red Sea coast. The small Afar population occupies the southeastern tip of the country there are also other smaller ethnic minority groups, such as the Bilen, Kunama, Nara and Rashaida. Tigrinya and Arabic are the most widely spoken languages here. Tigrinya is used by the Tigrinya people, while the Rashaida and Saho groups speak Arabic. 
Other languages include Tigre, Afar, Saho, Kunama, Bilan, Nara, and Hedareb. English is used in schools and business. As a former Italian colony, some Eritreans also speak Italian. Religions found in Eritrea include Christianity, Islam, and indigenous beliefs. Most Christians belong to Orthodox churches, like the Eritrean Orthodox Tiwahedo Church. Sunni Islam is the main Muslim denomination. Some ethnic groups continue to practice indigenous religions unique to their cultures and traditions. Eritrea is one of the world's least developed countries with a largely agriculture-based economy. The country's GDP is around $2 billion as of 2022, according to World Bank estimates. Agriculture employs about 80% of the workforce and accounts for 12% of the GDP in Eritrea. The major agricultural products include sorghum, lentils, vegetables, corn, cotton, tobacco and cattle. Mining is a growing industry focused mainly on gold, copper, zinc and potash. The Bisha mine is a major source of income and foreign investment. However, attracting sustained foreign investment in mining remains difficult due to international sanctions and political isolation. Eritrea also has considerable marine resources with high-value fisheries in the Red Sea. Fisheries products are both consumed locally and exported. Manufacturing, transportation, financial services and wholesale retail trade make up the rest of the economy but still need to be developed. In particular, the lack of adequate infrastructure, especially in energy, transportation and telecommunications, hinders economic growth. The border conflict with Ethiopia has also severely hurt the economy in recent decades. Eritrea's heavy reliance on remittances from its large diaspora leaves the economy vulnerable to external shocks. Eritrea gained independence in 1993 after a 30-year war with Ethiopia. It has no national elections or independent media. The People's Front for Democracy and Justice is the only legal political party and has ruled since independence under President Isaias Afwerki. The Judiciary and National Assembly hold predominantly ceremonial roles. Within Eritrea, the government actively suppresses dissent and curtails civil liberties, frequently resorting to arbitrary detention, torture, forced labor and limitations on freedom of expression, press and assembly. Mandatory and potentially indefinite military conscription is enforced, drawing a clear red line against criticism of the president. Their closed authoritarian system and systematic rights abuses drive thousands to leave each month at great risk. Granting asylum is complicated by difficulty verifying repression. However, evidence indicates Eritreans have valid reasons to flee, even if their lives are not directly threatened. More openness and reforms could stem the exodus. Eritrea has a strong storytelling tradition dating back centuries that continues in its modern literature. In the early 20th century, the main languages used in Eritrean literature were Tigrinya, Arabic and Italian. During the British administration in the 1940s, the first Tigrinya language newspaper was published and Tigrinya literary works emerged. In the 1950s and 1960s, pioneering Eritrean writers like Weldiab Weldemariam wrote books and poems criticizing colonial rule and expressing resistance. Weldiab's book Gebed Geba is considered the first Eritrean novel written in Tigrinya. Contemporary Eritrean literature covers themes like national identity, preserving cultural heritage, gender equality, and celebrating the country's unique landscapes and ethnic diversity. Writers like Saleh Gadi and Risom Haile draw on the oral storytelling traditions of their communities. From flavorful stews to the staple injera bread, Eritrean cuisine offers a unique blend of textures, spices and ingredients. 
Here are some of dishes found in Eritrea. One of the most popular dishes is zigni, a thick spicy stew made with Berber spice mix and meat or vegetables like potato, carrots and cabbage. Zigni can be eaten as part of the daily meal or on special occasions. Injera is a staple of Eritrean cuisine. This sour and spongy flatbread is made by fermenting teff flour and water for several days. Injera is served under sauces and stews like zigni and topped with spiced butter or yogurt. The bread can be torn into pieces and used to scoop up food during the meal. Another common dish is shiro, a smooth ground chickpea stew. Onions, garlic, ginger and Berber spice mix are added to the chickpea flour to give it flavor. Shiro has a consistency similar to hummus and is served for breakfast paired with injera or bread. For breakfast or lighter meals, genfo is popular. It is a porridge made from barley, wheat or sorghum flour and served with a dollop of Berber spiced clarified butter. Yogurt can also be added to genfo. It makes for a hearty and comforting dish. If you enjoyed this video on Eritrea, you'll love this next one.